A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank. This is part 22. How to make the superheated element. The original, now scrapped boiler from this simplex was a super simplex boiler with three superheater flues. The new boiler, which is very well made, only has one. So I could not modify the old superheated element. Because the superheater element piping, even though it was stainless steel and welded, was only a quarter of an inch diameter. At first I looked at the feasibility of modifying one of the elements to fit in this boiler. But unfortunately one superheater element of a quarter of an inch in diameter wouldn't pass enough steam to feed the cylinders. The engine would run but it would be down on power. I'm going to use a couple of pieces of 5 16 OD tube and here I am bending the first piece. I already had some 5 16 OD copper tube. The ones I'm going to use though I bought from Blackgate's Engineering and they do have a slightly thicker wall. I'm removing the smoke box door front ring. For two reasons, one being I need to fit the smoke box door and also I need clearer access to make and fit the superheater element. As a comparison, here are four pieces of tubing. The two outer ones are the ones I'm going to use and the inner ones are from my normal stock. I bent the end of one of the pieces of copper tube at a right angle and now it fits in the nut that's on the end of the main steam inlet. And with the nut in position and the pipe in the correct position I'm using a felt tip pen to mark where it exits the superheater flue. It is very important to make sure that this superheater element is the correct length. I do not want it to go through into the fire. Time to remove the boiler and actually have a look in the firebox. Here it is. The copper tube in its normal state is far too long. Not only does it stick out into the firebox, it sticks out of the fire hole door too. I made a mark using a felt tip pen as usual on the copper tube. I'm not going to cut on this mark, I'm going to cut one inch in from the mark. Using a small piece of cast gun metal, which I've partially machined, I'm going to make a fitting for the end of the two tubes. And eventually I will be silver soldering the two copper tubes into the gun metal block. But I don't want to rely just on a silver soldered connection here. I'm going to use a threaded connection and in this clip using my tailstock die holder on the piece of copper tubing I'm cutting a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread on the end of this first tube. Once I've done this one I will repeat the process for the other one. Although the other tube will not be cut to length. You'll see why later on in the video. This copper tubing has a thick enough wall to be able to thread it like you've just seen me do. I didn't have to put a piece of reinforcing bar down the centre. It's important if you thread thin wall copper tubing to put some kind of reinforcement down the centre, otherwise it will not work out. Now it's time to make the gunmetal block to fit on the end. Before cleaning off the end with the milling cutter, I cut the block to length. Once I'd done that, it was over to the drilling machine. I need to make two tapping size holes for 5 16 by 32 threads per inch that go down into the block but not all the way through it. I did this entirely by eye and I've mentioned the calibrated eye many many times in these videos. It doesn't need to be made with micrometer precision because it is not a precision part. I drilled the holes down into the block in two stages, first of all using a quarter inch drill followed by a 9 30 seconds of an inch drill. That way the hole cut better. Gun metal, or red bronze as I believe it's called in the USA, is a very slippery metal. If you use a really sharp drill it grabs, and if you use a blunt drill, the drill doesn't cut. I set the depth stop so I didn't drill all the way through the block, and here I'm threading the holes. 5 16 by 32 threads per inch to match the threads on the copper tube. I cleaned up the block and shaped it using my belt sander to fit down the superheater flue. With the block fitted in the vise, I need to make a hole between the two threaded pieces to allow for the passage of steam through the block. Using my Proxon motor tool, I first of all drilled a small hole between the two threaded holes and now I'm using a really coarse burr to enlarge the hole between the two threaded parts of the block. It's more traditional to drill the holes in the first place at an angle to each other if you do it that way, the drill bit that you use to drill the initial holes before threading them 
breaks through at the bottom of the holes. But I wanted my two superheater pipes to be parallel to each other all the way down. And here I'm finishing off the job using a small grinder in the Proxon motor tool. After screwing both of the copper tubes very tightly into the gunmetal block, it's time to silver solder the whole joint. You could, if you wish, braze this joint. That way, I suppose, it could go through into the fire, as a brazed joint melts at a much higher temperature than silver solder. But if I was making a radiant superheater that went over the fire, I would use a welded stainless steel structure. I haven't got the equipment to do this, I have no welding equipment at all, but when funds allow, I hope to buy a welder soon. Usually, when I show the silver soldering process, I apply the silver solder far too early. Is this because I'm stupid and incompetent? No, it isn't. I generally do it this way for the videos, because I get a lot of communications from viewers asking why they can't silver solder, and why does the silver solder just stay in blobs on top of the work? There are a combination of answers for this question. Dirty contaminated metal, insufficient flux, and more common, insufficient heat. I'm purposely applying a lot of silver solder on this joint. I'll clean it up shortly. If this superheater got so hot as to melt the silver solder, and I don't think that's ever going to happen, as the copper is threaded into the block, the block will not blow off the end of the pipes. This clip shows the block on the end of the pipes after I cleaned it up and shaped it using my linisher or belt sander. It's not a tight fit in the flue, and it must not be a tight fit in the flue. It's just a very easy rattle fit in there. Some viewers may be thinking, why didn't I use 3 8 diameter tubing? The answer to that is the block would have had to be bigger and the tubes would be bigger. It's worth remembering that for a superheater to work, there needs to be heat from the firebox going down the superheater flue. And if the pipes and the block are too big, this is not going to happen. It's also worth remembering that you need to be able to get a flue brush down the superheater flue to clean out the ashes and rubbish that gets in there from the fire. Now I'm approaching a critical part of making this superheater element. I need to bend the other tube to go into the wet header. In this clip I'm using a piece of scrap 5 16 tube bent at 90 degrees to see whether it's going to work. Originally I was going to make a special union and silver solder that into the wet header, but no, I think the pipe will go in there okay as it is. It's just going to be a bit nerve-wracking getting the bend in the right place. With the original felt tip pen mark aligned with the end of the superheater flue, I bent the long pipe that will need cutting off. My first attempt though wasn't good, so I annealed the pipe by heating it up to bright red, then quenching the pipe in some water. And now I'm pleased to say the bend is in exactly the right place. Using my small band saw, I cut the piece of pipe to the correct length. The black felt tip pen mark shows how much of this copper tube is going to fit into the wet header. I trimmed a tiny bit more off it and then I fitted it loosely into the wet header, so here you can see the almost finished job. I refitted the boiler to the smoke box and sat it on the engine. And as you can see, everything lines up fine. Unfortunately though, you can't see the wet header because the petticoat pipe's in the way. I'm going to make this petticoat pipe much easier to remove than it currently is. I'll show this in another video, as well as the final silver soldering of the superheater element. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay well. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.